Hello everybody, I'm Miss Lisa and welcome back to another episode of Kids Day at the Mac. Only we're not at the Mac yet, we're still virtual, but we're still going to have a lot of fun today. Today I'm going to be telling you about tapa cloth, which is a fabric made from bark, like the bark of a tree. And it was something that was made by the people in the of the islands in the Pacific Ocean. For example, the island of, islands of Hawaii, you would know them um, from your studies at school, or maybe you've even been there. There's also some islands down here called Samoa and Tonga and Fiji. And these, these are actually uh, countries that are made up of islands. And all of these islands the peoples of these islands would make tapa cloth. It has different names in the different regions. So in Hawaii, it's actually called kapa cloth. In Fiji, it's called masi. In Samoa, it's called sayapu. And in Tonga, it's called uh, natu. So these different fa these fabrics with different names were pretty much made the same way. And what would happen would be the people would um, take the bark from the paper mulberry tree. That was the best tree to use. And they would cut the trees down while they were still pretty young. They would grow them for this purpose. And they would cut them down while they were still pretty young. And they would split the bark off. And then they would peel the inner bark from the outer bark. The inner bark was the soft bark that they used to make the tapa cloth. And they would take the strips of the inner bark and they would beat them, beat them and beat them and beat them until they would soften and spread out to make a fairly large uh, piece of, we would call it cloth, right? And then the edges could be beaten together to make even bigger pieces or sometimes they used a little bit of a gluey substance and then beat that together. So you could make, they made very large pieces uh, or smaller pieces as necessary. And then these, these cloths would be decorated with dyes made from trees or from other vegetation, or they would be painted. Designs would be painted onto these tapa cloths. And the cloths themselves have become quite, um, they're very desirable. And if you ever go to one of these island nations, you'll probably see those cloths being sold. But I'm going to show you today how we can make tapa cloth. Obviously, we can't make the real thing because we don't have a bunch of mulberry trees out in the backyard that I can cut down and show you from the real tree how to make it. But what we're going to do instead is we are going to make our own version. Here's a couple samples that I made. I'm going to show you how to make something that's very similar. And so what we're going to need today is a paper bag. This one I've already cut into three pieces, four pieces. Here's one, two, three, four. We're going to need a spray bottle with some water in it. We're going to need something to decorate our cloth with. So I've got some temper paints. I have black. I have red. I have brown and a little bit of blue. And I'll tell you why when we get to the painting. If you don't want to use paints, you can use crayons, that works too. And the other things we're going to need is something to stamp the pattern with. And so I've got a bunch of these small potatoes and I'm going to show you how to carve some little stamps out of the potatoes. You can also use other things for stamping, like maybe the end of a pencil. If you stamped with the end of a pencil, you would get small dots. And you also will want some kind of a, a paintbrush. So 
something to carve if you're doing the potatoes, something to carve your potatoes with. Uh, you'll need, and I've also I'm going to use a straw. And you'll need a pair of scissors to cut your paper bag into pieces. And also probably some water so you could rinse your paintbrush. While we're talking about paintbrushes, I just want to show you this. This is actually a paintbrush that my mother, who lives in Hawaii, she gave me this paintbrush. It's a Hawaiian paintbrush. It's actually a baby coconut. And it's been stripped of the outer husk down here so that the uh, nice husky, the um, fibers are now showing. And you can dip it into paint, and it works pretty much just like a paintbrush with bristles in it. Okay, so let's go ahead and make the paper. So we're going to make a paper bag paper. We'll just pretend that this is actually a piece of bark that has been pounded very, very flat. And we have to soften this up because this doesn't feel anything like cloth right now. So what we're going to do is this is really we're going to crunch it up. I'm going to crunch it. I'm going to crunch it some more. Crunch it really hard. As much as you want. Because as you crunch it up and un you fold it and unfold it, it'll soften. You want it to be nice and soft like cloth. It always surprises me how soft these paper bags can get. Okay, you can see it's looking a bit softer now. And I'm going to gently open it up. And I'm going to spray it with just a little bit of water. I'm just going to put this down and spray it with a little bit of water. And I'm going to crunch it up again. And the water also helps to soften it. Okay, that's feeling pretty soft. I'm going to gently unwrap it. You can see it's much softer now. And I'm going to think about some designs. And you might want to start by just making some diagonal, uh, sorry, some horizontal and vertical lines, some vertical lines and some horizontal lines to sort of divide the space up into squares and rectangles. And then we can put different designs inside those. I'm just going to take this paintbrush. Oh, and the other thing you can do instead of using a paintbrush is to take some cardboard and just you can think about um, using the cardboard to make straight lines. And I think I'll do that to show you. So I'm using the black temper paint 
and I'm going to put my card in like this. And I can put it down on my tapa cloth. And it's a pretty good way of making a line. Nice horizontal line. I think I'll do another one about here. Of course, you can always use the paintbrush, or if you don't like paint or you don't have temper paints, you can use crayons. But if you if you spray your paper with water. You'll have to let it dry before you can use the crayons on it. Okay, so see how nicely that piece of cardboard made these horizontal and vertical lines. I'm just going to set this aside for a minute because I want to now talk to you about stamps. So we are going to be making some stamps out of potatoes. And if you've never done this before, it's a lot of fun. You can use a, a big potato and cut it into smaller pieces and then make stamps with each of them. Or you can use these baby potatoes. And I'm just going to cut this one in half. and it's a little bit damp inside. I'm just going to take a paper towel and dry it briefly on the paper towel. Now if I want to make little circles in my potato, I can use a straw. And the way to do this is to press it into the potato and give it a turn. And then you want to get that piece out of your potato. So you just kind of turn and pull it sideways, and it usually pops out. That time it didn't. Let's try again. Pull it sideways and twist. There we go. So it makes a nice hole in the potato. Now another thing we can do is use a plastic knife and we can cut little sections into the potato. So I think I'm going to try to make something sort of like a star. So I'm going to cut out some triangle pieces. from the edge of the potato. Be careful when you're doing this not to slip and cut your finger. So it's kind of like a star, kind of like a, a flower. I'm going to dry that. And then let's just see what it looks like when we stamp with it. I'm going to take a little bit of this red color, sort of a red brown. I took the brown paint and I mixed a bit of red into it. The red and the brown and the black are very traditional colors for decorating your tapa cloth. I'm just going to press this down and see what happens. It's almost like a flower. And so now we can make a pattern of these shapes by repeating that star. And 
inside this rectangle. Get one more in here. All right. Let me. This is the potato that had the circle cut out of it with the straw. So let's try making a pattern with this one. Let's make this one brown. I'm going to paint the temper paint on. Press down, pull off. Press down, pull off. Now I've got my paints put into yogurt pot lids and if they start to dry out I'm just going to spray them with a little bit of that water. But I like having them in the lids because it's, it's easy to work with the paints when they're spread out like this. Okay. Now this is one that I made earlier. Where is it? Ah. I just cut some straight marks in this potato. And I had to scoop a tiny bit of the potato out to get these little ridges. So if you like this pattern, let me show you how to do that. Okay, what you want to do is carve straight line and then slightly curve into it from the other side so that you pop out a piece like this. And let's do that again. Angle slightly towards that. So pop that out. Be really careful that you don't get your finger. And never use a sharp knife. Always use a plastic knife or maybe um, a little piece of wood to carve these. Don't use something sharp like scissors or a metal knife because potatoes are nice and soft. Okay, let's try this one. So I think I want to use more of that red, the red-brown. So I took the brown tempera paint and like I said I mixed a little bit of the red tempera paint in to get this one and then I mixed just a tiny bit of blue into the brown tempera paint to darken it just a little bit to get this one here. So that's why I have the blue. Just a little bit of blue to darken that, that brown. Okay, so that's how we made the stripes.
think I'm going to make some more with this sort of star. And I think I will make them black this time. Now you can go ahead and just dip it straight into the paint. That's another good thing about having it in the yogurt pot lids. But for me, brushing the paint on is a little bit better. You get the right amount on your piece of potato. Okay, now I want to make a few lines. Let's go ahead and paint some lines on our top of cloth. Let's try some diagonal lines up here and let's make them black. And I think I'll put some brown vertical lines here. If you don't like all of these crumples in your paper, you can actually have it ironed before you start doing the painting, but I don't mind it. I think it's kind of pretty. It gives it more texture. Texture is a word that means how something feels or how it appears to feel. And so we can say that this paper is now softer than the paper bag. Paper cloth that we made is softer than the paper bag. Soft is a texture word. It's also a bit crumply or Crinkly. I haven't used this one. This one is three small dots from the straw. And I think for my last thing, I'm going to use this one again. I like this one. It 
haven't done it in brown. And there we go, our finished piece of tapa cloth. Here's a piece I made earlier, another piece I made earlier. They're nice and soft. So let's just go over that one more time. You're going to start out by making your cloth out of a piece of paper bag. You can cut one of these shopping bags into smaller pieces, or you can use a big piece like this. This will be fun to crunch up. You're going to crunch it, open it, crunch it, open it, crunch it, open it. Open it carefully or it's going to tear. And if it does tear, it's okay. You know, just work with what you've got. But the more you crunch it and open it, you'll feel it getting softer and softer. This is fun. You can stand on it. You can open it, crunch it up. You can really work, work it and it'll soften and soften. And then you can take your spray bottle and spray water on one side. Don't get it soggy, just a little bit. Spray it, turn it over, spray it some more and crunch it up some more. Crunch, open, crunch, open. Spray it a little bit more if you want. Spray, spray, and turn it over and spray some more. And as you crunch it and open it and crunch it and open it, you'll feel it softening and softening. This one's pretty soft. This one I worked for quite a while. And then if you don't like the crumpled look, you can have somebody iron it for you so it actually flattens out a little bit but you still want it to feel soft. And then after that, you're going to start out by um, dividing the big space into smaller spaces. It's easiest if you use a piece of cardboard on its end like this. You can just put it in the paint and use it to make the lines. So into the paint, onto the paper, into the paint, onto the paper, into the paint onto the paper. And then once you have your larger piece of paper divided into smaller sections, you can start thinking about how you want those sections to be decorated. And you can think about patterns of shapes that you might be able to cut from potatoes. And this is, um, potato printing is actually something you may have done before. It's a lot of fun if you haven't done it. If you haven't done it, you really have to try. Um, I like using the small potatoes because they make a nice little stamper on their own without having a large piece of potato to deal with. So if you have these smaller potatoes, just cut them in half and dry off the, the surface and then use something to carve into that potato. I recommend a plastic knife. That works fairly well or um, maybe a, a piece of a, a wood skewer or something like that. Just be super careful that you don't accidentally cut your fingers. You don't want to stick anything into your eye. So go carefully. And then you'll want a paintbrush because if you can paint your shape with the paint, it gives you the right amount of paint on your stamp so that when you put it down on your paper you'll get a nice print. If you just stick it into the paint it might be too much and then it's just going to be a big blob on your paper. So use a paintbrush and I should have also told you when I was talking about paintbrushes you don't want a very soft watercolor like paintbrush. You want something with firm bristles that will move tempera paint. You'll find that Certain brushes are very much softer than others, and this is a bristle brush. It has very firm bristles, so I can easily take 
the tempera paint and paint it onto my potato and then make a stamp with it. If you have a soft brush, it's hard to move the tempera paint. It can be hard to move the tempera paint. So let's just take a look at how these turn out. You can see it prints very nicely. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you enjoy making tapa cloth, or in Hawaii, it would be called kapa cloth, or in Samoa, it would be called seapu, or in Tonga, it is called uh, natu, or in Fiji, it's called Maasai. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I hope that you come back next month for another episode of Kids Day at the Mac. We'll probably still be virtual, but we'll still have a lot of fun. Stay safe, stay inside, do art, and I'll see you next time. Bye.